Hello, 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 everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Come on in and just comment. I can hear you down below. Give everyone a second to join in. Let me know when you're here and if you can hear me well. Hi, Miss Congeniality. How are you? <clears throat> Hi, Mimi. How are you? So tonight, um, we're going to be talking about believing God when you are on, believing God for breakthrough when you are on the brink of a miracle or when you believe in God um, for breakthrough in your life. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. So I just want to welcome you all. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Brenda. Hello, hello. Hi, Robin. How are you? Hey, Adonica. How are you? Hi, MCB. You guys, be sure to share this with a friend, especially a friend that you know um, is believing God for some type of miracle in their life, whether it's a financial miracle, um, a healing miracle, a relational miracle, um, a professional miracle, whatever that miracle is. Um, tag that friend, share this video with that friend. I guarantee you it will be a blessing to them. So we all encounter different situations and circumstances in our life. Um, there have been promises and prophecies that prophecies that we have all received in our life that we're waiting to come to pass. So a lot of times we have to ask ourselves, what do we do when we are either on the brink of a miracle or we believe in God for a rapid manifestation of a miracle? And I, I'm one of the people that believe every single uh, answer to whatever problem we may face in our lives, you can find it in the Word of God. And I really believe that. I really believe that. Um, when you believe in the Lord for a mighty breakthrough in your life, like that thing that the doctor said would not happen, that thing that you just don't see um, exactly how uh, it's going to come come into fruition. Those are the things that I'm talking about. So when we believe in God for a mighty breakthrough or a mighty miracle in our life, we have to learn how to wait in prayer and fasting, not minding how long it takes to get the results. Many times when it takes some time to get results in our lives, we start to get frustrated. We start to try to figure out how to do it ourselves. Um, we try to figure out a plan B. We feel like God does not hear us or God hasn't answered our prayers. We feel like we've done something wrong to prevent God from, you know, answering our prayers. Sometimes we feel like, well, maybe we're not worthy. It's because I did this or I did that. It's because I'm not living this type of life or I'm not living that type of life. We always find reasons to uh, blame ourselves, you know, uh, for not hearing from the voice of God. And then sometimes when we don't find the fault within ourselves, we make the dangerous mistake of blaming God. And I will tell you that no matter how rough a situation may be, never, ever, ever, ever blame God because he does not come to steal. He does not come to kill and he does not come to destroy. So you know that that is the work of the enemy, you know, um, but that is not the work of God. That is not his purpose in our life. So in Ezekiel um, 12 and 28, it says, Therefore say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, there, there, there shall be none of my words prolonged anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saying the Lord God, saith the Lord God. That's Ezekiel 12 and 28. So somebody might need that word. So someone type that in for them. Ezekiel 12 and 28. Thank you so much, Robin. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Ezekiel 12 and 28. So we serve a God that never comes late. To us, it may feel like he's late, but it's, he's not late. Sometimes we can get things at a certain point in a certain factor in our lives that we would self-destruct. And I have learned that definitely to be the case in my life. There were some things that if God having had would have given me those things when I really, 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 really wanted those things, I would have um, 
I would have definitely, you know, self-destructed. I would not have known how to properly handle those things, how to properly treat those things, how to properly uh, nurture those things. Um, some of the things that God probably would have granted me with, I would probably would have looked down on other people. So I just feel like God gives us the perfect things in his perfect timing. Okay. I remember, I'll give you guys an example. I remember when I graduated from college, I had this whole situation mapped out where I was going to like have this certain house, this certain car. Um, I was going to make this certain amount of money. I was going to drive this certain car. I was going to do all those things. And I remember like I went to, through a very low point in my life where I lost everything. And years later, you know, once I got into the things of God, and I began to live on purpose for Christ. Um, he began to bless me with those things when I was least expected. Like I wasn't into the luxury cars anymore. I wasn't into the name brand stuff. I didn't want those things. Like that was not my purpose anymore. And right when I reached that phase in my life is when God began to bestow all of those blessings in my life. That's when I drove the luxury car. That's when I got, you know, all the things that I had sought to get, you know, after I graduated from college. And I, you know, had to come to the realization that God had given those things to me in his timing. Because if I had gotten those things when I thought that I wanted them or I thought that I deserved them, I would have misused those things. I would have, you know, thought that I was better than other people. I would have, you know, probably, you know, uh, misaligned myself, you know, because I had these things. And so I'm so grateful for the time of maturity that he took me through. And it's like now, you know, even though he's bestowed, uh, bestowed a, a, a lot of blessings upon my life, you guys don't ever see me like, oh, this is, you know, what I have. Oh, look at this kind of car. Oh, look at, that's not me because I realize that God is so much deeper than that. So when we ask God to, uh, for things, it is important for us to real, to wait for God's perfect timing in order for us to be able to handle those things so that we don't give premature birth to those things, that we don't allow those things to self-destruct us. Like getting married out of season can lead to divorce, right? Getting um, a numerous uh, financial blessings could lead us into even deeper debt later on. There are so many ways that we can self-destruct. So we have to realize that we serve a God that never comes late. He is always right on time and he makes all things beautiful in his time. Not in our time, not in your time, not in my time, but in his time. Even if it seems like there is a delay, hang on because he promised us in his word that it will not, it cannot return void. And that's in Isaiah 55 and 11. Someone uh, write that down. Isaiah 55 and 11, his word always performed that which is sent and it will never return void. And that's the promise that we have. If we believe in the word of God, we have to understand that it will not return void. So if he promised us, you know, um, if he promised us healing, if he promised us deliverance, if he promised us breakthrough, whatever it is that we uh, received a promise from God, we have to understand that no matter how long it may take, that it will come. That promise, that blessing will come. And it is up to us to keep our hearts pure, to keep our spirits pure, to keep our motives pure, so that when he does bless us in that arena, that we are ready to receive the blessing. Okay? So I just wanted to make sure that Hey, Tara, how are you, girl? I miss you. I just wanted to make sure that we were all aligned on that first. And I just, um, yes, that's a good one. Um, I think it was Junaba, how she was saying she was asking God to remove the taste of cigarettes for her mouth. Nothing happened. She stopped smoking and she did not um, crave them anymore because God had already done his part. He was just waiting 
on her to do her part. Absolutely, Adonica. He may de did not he may delay us, but de delaying does not necessarily mean a denial. And sometimes when we are um, delayed from something, it's actually God's way of protecting us, protecting us. I look at you know maybe past relationships that I could have gotten myself involved in, and I look at like what if I had married that individual and I look at their lives now and my lives now and I'm like, I would not be the woman that I am today if God had not um, delayed me in that, in that arena, you know? And so I'm really thankful. Sometimes the, um, those delays are really blessings. They are really setting you up to get you to the destiny and the purpose that he has just for you in every area in your life. Okay. So um, with that being said, I know that many of you guys, just like me, uh, are on the brink of a breakthrough or you're, you're wanting in your heart, you need a rapid manifestation of a miracle. Some of you guys may be um, pressing a, a situation in your life that is, um, you may be in a situation in your life where it is detrimental to you. It is detrimental to your family. You know, you may be facing a... Uh, a life threatening situation and we all find ourselves well we really need a miracle in our life we really need breakthrough in our life we really need peace in our lives and that's what we're going to pray about tonight so um if you guys don't have any questions if you have any questions about you know how we wait when we are waiting for a breakthrough and how we um, should uh, position ourselves when we are believing God for a rapid manifestation of a miracle, you can list it down below and I will do my best to answer them. I'm going to also give you guys scriptures that you need to be standing on. That's another important thing for you guys who are joining me for the first time. It is so important for you to, when you're doing your, um, when you are doing your your uh, confessions for each month, you, it's so important for you to write and confess the word of God. Like your prayer should be around the confession that God has, you know, that uh, God has written his word. I know I've showed you guys this a, a million times, but this is my book of prayers and confessions. These are the materials that I used to study in my everyday life and it's just so imperative for me so everything from academics to relationships to you know all sorts of things i have so many things in this book so many promises in this in this book so many things that have come to pass so many things that have yet come to pass but i know that that's a promise that god you know made to me and i do believe that he will fulfill his promises and so there are so, oh my goodness, I cannot begin to share, I mean, show you guys so many. Just the other day, I was looking through this book and I had found, like one day I was praying and asking God, like, what did he create me to do? So many of us, you know, we don't know exactly what God created us to do. And I'm also like, I'm always like, you know, at this particular point in my life, I was praying and I really didn't know what God created me to do. I felt like my life was more than just what I was doing at that time, but I didn't know what else it was for me to do. I didn't sing. I didn't dance. I didn't do anything. You know, any of the, the normal talents that people have to be great, I didn't possess any of those talents. So I'm like, God, what did you create me to do? Um, I just didn't know. And I don't know if are there any of you out there tonight, those of you who you just don't know if this is what God, you know, what God created you to do. And so I didn't know that. And I was reading the parables of the 10 talents. And after I got through reading that parable, if you guys have not um, read that parable, I highly recommend it. But I was reading the parable of the 10 talents and I was like, God, you give, you gave us all a talent. Even if it was just one talent, you gave us all a talent. And I just need to know what my talent is. I need to know what my gift is. Like if it's one gift, if it's 10 gifts, I need to know. Because at that point in time, I didn't feel like I had any gifts. I didn't feel like I had anything to offer. So after church, I was sitting down one day. I came home and... um. I was praying to God and this is what he dropped in my spirit. Just like when a, car, a manufacturer creates a car 
in that in your car in the glove compartment is a manual and in that manual you will find how that car works so nobody i mean if you get a manual for a mercedes benz and a manual for a cadillac escalade there are some things that will operate the same but there are some things that will operate totally different and the only person that can tell you how you were meant to, how it was meant to operate is that particular manufacturer okay so a mercedes-benz manufacturer can't tell you how bmw is supposed to work and a bmw manufacturer can't tell you how a cadillac escalade is supposed to work because even though they're all vehicles just like we're all individuals created in the image and the likeness of god we were not all created to do the same thing and because we were not all created to do the same thing, we have to ask our manufacturer exactly what we were created to do. And this is what I want you guys to do this month, especially those of you guys who don't know what God created you to do. Sit down and ask him. Ask him to show you the Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he placed in your life. You know, it may not be something that you act on right now. Um, some of these things that I, I wrote these, so many, I forgot, like 10 years ago. I think at the end of last year is when I found it. And this was like, I wrote it in 2009. And I found this at the end of 2019 in December. And I was, and the reason I know is because this particular uh, email address right here was for someone that I, it is the email address of one of my coworkers from back then. And so I wrote down the 10 talents of M. Shantae because my name is Melanie Shantae. So I wrote down the talent and then I began to speak you know, pray and just ask God, God, what did you create me to do? Okay. This is all I said. It wasn't anything real super deep. I just said, listen, father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word in Jeremiah 29 and 11, that you know the plans that you have for me, said the Lord plans of peace and not of evil plans to give me a hope in a future. So what was your purpose for creating me? I know your purpose for creating me was greater than me working on this job. Your purpose for creating me was greater than, you know, all the situations and circumstances that I've been through. Your purpose for creating me was more than just being a daughter or a sister or a girlfriend your purpose was um cre for creating me was greater than any of this but i don't know what my purpose is and you're the only one who can tell me why you created me this is all i said to god and then i just got quiet and i this is the, the journaling and things that i share with you guys every month i've been doing this for a long long time and it wasn't as fancy and everything as it is now because i didn't have the knowledge that i had now but it was just as effective i didn't have the knowledge then that i had now but it was just as effective so the lord began to speak to me and i wrote all these things down and i wrote down the inventor the um um author was the number one thing the motivator uh speaker was the number two thing the what was that entrepreneur the poet the pageant producer slash coordinator the designer the trainer the scrapbooker the event planner and number 10 was the inventor so as i was looking through this and then over here now this is when god spoke right this is when God spoke to me. And then he also gave me an idea to do a collection of ornaments with all the names of Jesus. That's another idea he given me. So when he gave me that, here I go over here and I start writing down what I felt like God created me to do. Now, dancer, um, creator, writer, because I wanted to make it look like it was something that you know that aligned with what i was doing at the time because i was a praise dancer at the time he didn't say anything over here about praise dancing um you know there's so many in you know, a creator i thought that sounded more you know fancy or whatever so i wrote down creator right and then when i got to number three the holy spirit says stop if you're going to ask me what you were created to do, I don't need you to tell me. You did not create you. I created you. And so that's when you see me stopping after number three. I didn't write down anything from number four. And I just aligned myself with what 
the word of God said, what the Holy Spirit had said to me. And these are the things that he created me to do. Now, this list could have just been one thing. This list could have been five things. This thing list could have been 15 things. But this is what he created me to do. This was the list I was trying to make sense of after God had already spoken to me. So when God speaks to you about what you're created to do, you believe that and you pursue that. That's what he told me. OK, and so as I began to align myself and to um, follow the voice of God in my life at that time, you know, I did not have a lot of experience planning an event. I was just doing things at church, you know, volunteering. Um, I did do pageants. I participated in pageants, but I never thought about owning my own pageant system. I never thought about producing my own pageants, even though I knew how. And then last year, as I sat down and I began to reflect and uh, um, the Lord led me to this list that he had given me over 10 years ago, I was like, oh my God, like I've done everything on this list except the number one thing, which he told me I was an author. And I was like, I haven't done that. So that's why I was really pressing, pushing myself to get this book finished before the decade ended last year, because he told me 10 years ago what he created me to do. And even if what God created you to do does not give you this big worldwide platform. If it doesn't give you this fame and fortune, if it doesn't give you a viral video or a viral post, it doesn't matter when you're doing what God created you to do. You're touching lives and you're changing lives and souls are being saved and lives are being saved and lives are being spared and people are being delivered and set free. It doesn't matter that I don't have a million subscribers. It doesn't matter that I don't have have a, a million view video that doesn't matter what matters to me is that when I get to heaven that that my beside my name are things that God is proud of me doing in the earth with the platform that he has given me none of these things may not ever amount to fortune or frame fame nothing none of this may not equate to that but that's okay it's okay because at the end of the day, I believe what God has done in my life. I believe that this is what, you know, he has called me to do. I believe God. I believe that these are the gifts and the talents that he instilled in my life when he created me. And when you seek God, he will show you what he created you to do. That one thing may be a mother. He may just tell you, you know what? Eloise, I created you to be a great mother. You need to be okay with that because people need to see examples of a great mother. You know, he may have created uh, Dulce Maria. Dulce Maria, you know what? I created you to be a great whatever. It doesn't have to be anything that people think, you know, will bring the fame and the fortune and all of that. It's when you do what's pleasing to God, he is going to make sure that he gives you all the provisions that you need to do the job that you need to do for his kingdom. I always tell people millionaires are made in every facet of life. Even if your job is a janitor, that you can find a janitor out there. I know a lady right now that has a cleaning company. She started out cleaning houses. She moved to cleaning businesses. She does not have a, a high school education, but yet she makes a million dollars a year because she is in the purpose that God called her to do. So many times we look at somebody else's purpose and somebody else's platform and what somebody else go has going on, and we want to recreate that for ourselves, but we miss out on the gift that God has placed on the inside of us so many people shy away from like the restaurant fields you know i don't want to work at mcdonald's i don't want to work here i want to work an office job but do you know that millionaires are, have been created in mcdonald's do you know that i remember when i worked in when i worked my last corporate job i was coming through arkansas and i was looking up on the in the in the cat i was going i was coming um I, I had landed at this particular airport and i was driving down the road and you see like cow pastures and 
uh, chicken farms. And then out of the blue, I saw a um, Bentley dealership. And I thought, well, what in the world is a Bentley dealership doing in the middle of nowhere in Arkansas next to cow pastures and chicken farms? A Bentley dealership. So I was talking to my coworker about it, and he said, do you know that there are more millionaires per capita in Arkansas than anyone anywhere else in the world? These are everyday millionaires. You cannot get caught up in titles. You have to realize what God has created just for you. And these people were just working their purpose. They were working in factories. They were working with Sam Walton. They were working with Tyson Foods. You know all those big brands now, but they weren't that big back then. And those people were working in factories and they became everyday millionaires. So don't take your talent and hide it take your talent and invest in your talent invest in your gift no matter what it is because god will take that and bring you and usher you into the presence of great men and women you work your category so many times people get pulled out of their category because they look at somebody else's category and they feel like oh that category looks like it has more fame and fortune oh that category has more likes so let me switch over there oh that category is going viral so let me work that category oh that category has yielded them a bigger house or a bigger car so let me go over to that category oh that category has given them a husband or given them the wife and let them go over to that category oh that category has yielded them a new car so let me move to that category and all the while we are burying the gift and the talent that god has given unto us don't do that don't do that and so many times we're on the break of a, we, we're believing God for a breakthrough and we're believing God for a miracle. But how can we break through in a ground that he did not predestine us to plant in? If you are an apple seed and you're planted in the ground with potatoes, you may not break through. You're in the wrong ground. You have to bloom where you are planted. And that could be one area, that could be five areas, that could be 10 areas, but wherever that area is, you bloom in that area and be okay with that. I have a friend that I love to life. And I believe with all my heart, she was created to be a mother. She just has the heart of a mother. She has the love of a mother. I, I mean, her life is a ministry to me. And we need that. We need that. Some people were just created to be teachers, and that's okay. We need that. We need all these categories to work together to achieve the destiny and the purpose of the kingdom. Okay? And once we get ourselves aligned and we realize what God has created us to do, and then we uh, began to stand on the word of God pertaining to that area or to that thing that God has told us to do, we'll begin to see breakthrough. We'll begin to see rapid manifestations of miracles in our life because we are in the correct lane. We are in the correct category. We are working our category. One of the scriptures that I love is um, Isaiah 58 and 8. And it says, then thy light shall break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. So he, his glory will be your reward. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God, show me what you created me to be, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. You did not create me to be single. You did not create me to be childless. You did not create me to be sick. You did not create me to be depressed. You did not create me to be oppressed. You did not create me to be a mistress. You did not create me to be a liar. You did not create me to be a thief. You did not create me to be a whoremonger. You did not create me to be a stripper. You did not create me to be a side chick. You did not create me to be number two, number three, number four. You did not create me for any of this. 
You did not create me to hate. You did not create me to gossip. You did not create me to do any of these things. You created me with thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. That's why you created me. And because you created me to give me an expected end, I need to know what end should I be expecting. And he'll tell you. God, what end shall be I be expecting? What end shall I be expecting? So many people, oh, he gave me a Jeremiah 29 11. That is awesome. But what end shall I be expecting? Should my end be a four-year degree? Should my end be a wife? Should my end be in ministry? Should my end be an entrepreneur? Should my end be a mother? Should my end be healed? Should my end be delivered? Should my end be healthy? Should my end be whole? Should my end be whatever? A homeowner? What should my end be? Ask him. He will tell you. No one else can tell you that but God. They can give you a part of it, but not all of it. Yes, it's King James Version, Jenny. But you can read it in any version you want to read it in. Jeremiah 29 and 11. <clears throat> okay. All right. So with that being said, we are going to pray. Are you guys ready to pray? Say yes. Say yes if you're ready to pray, and then we're going to hop off. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I know I started on one thing, and Holy Spirit led, led me a different way, but, hey, we are vessels to God. We're vessels. We're just a willing vessel. All right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you renouncing all things of dishonesty. We ask you to forgive us for all the wrong things that we have said, that we have thought, and that we have done that were not pleasing in your eyesight. We repent before you, O oh God, for ever allowing our tongues to be used by anyone except the Holy Spirit. And we receive your forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for it. Now we ask you to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. And we give you and you alone the glory, the honor, and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen now father in the name of Jesus we disman and disband every we dismiss and disband from our heart every thought every image or every picture of failure on these matters concerning our lives in the name of Jesus we reject every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear every spirit of discouragement in the name of Jesus we cancel all ungodly delays to the manifestation of our miracles in the mighty name of Jesus we say oh father let the angels of the living God roll away every stone of hindrance to the manifestation of breakthroughs in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, hasten your word to perform it. Perform miracles in every department of our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, avenge us of our adversary speedily in Jesus' mighty name. We refuse to agree with the enemies of our progress in the name of Jesus. We refuse to agree with those that say we're too old to go back to school in the name of Jesus. We refuse to agree with the doctors who have given us the bad report. You said in your word, whose report shall we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says we are healed according to Isaiah 53 and 5. We refuse to believe, oh God, the loan officers that say will not approve, that we will not be homeowners. We refuse to believe the letter of rejection that we received in the mail. We, re we reject it now in the name of Jesus. And we say the gates of hell shall not prevail. Father, in the name of Jesus, we desire breakthrough in every area in our life today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for breakthrough in our finances, breakthrough in our homes, Breakthrough in our businesses, breakthrough on our jobs, breakthrough in the lives of our children, breakthrough in our marriages, breakthrough, breakthrough on every side. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, we declare and declare and decree that in this week we shall experience breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will receive breakthrough in the area of our finances. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for unexpected checks coming in the mail this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for answered prayers in this week. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for breakthrough this month and this year. In the name of Jesus, concerning every area in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be turbulence and rearrangement and revision and reorganization 
organization and reroutings of situations and circumstances in order to create a path to our desired miracles in the name of Jesus. Let every whole present in the container of our life be mended in the name of Jesus. Let every whole present in the, in the financial container of our life be mended in the name of Jesus. Our pockets will not have holes. We will not be blessed financially and lose out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you and we glorify your name. Now, Father, we bind and we plunder and we render to nothing every anti-testimony and every anti-miracle and every anti-prosperity force in our lives in the name of Jesus. We come against every word curse that has been spoken against our finances that we we will never head, that we will never get out of debt. We curse every word that we have spoken over our own finances in the name of Jesus, the Lord God who answers by fire. The Lord God of Elijah answer us by fire in the name of Jesus. The Lord God who answered Moses speedily at the Red Sea, O God, answer us by fire in the name of Jesus. Part our sea, O God, of financial difficulty. Part our sea, O God, of healing. Part our sea, O God, of breakthrough. Part our sea, O God, of of miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you are the Lord God who changed the lot of Jabez. Answer us by fire in the name of Jesus. You are the Lord that quickens the dead and call those things that be not as though they were in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all comfort and joy. Answer us by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, let every foreign need preventing the manifestations of miracles in heaven and on the earth and underneath the earth bow now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we just thank you, oh, God, for victory over all the forces of wickedness in the name of Jesus. We pull down local wickedness, national wickedness, international wickedness in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say the gates of hell shall not prevail in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, we we ask you to restore our faith, oh God. Restore our faith, oh God. In the areas that we have lost faith, we say restore our faith, oh God. We come out of agreement with fear in every area in our life. We come out of agreement with doubt in every area in our life. We come out of agreement with disbelief in every area in our life. We come out of agreement with sorrow and pain in every area in our life. We come out of agreement with hurt and frustration in every area in our life. We come out of the agreement with mourning, oh God, in every area in our life, oh God. We come out of agreement with grief in every area in our life, and we say let every evil force gathered against our breakthrough be completely scattered in the name of jesus we reject the spirit of the tail and we claim the spirit of the head in jesus mighty name we command all evil record records planted by the devil in anyone's mind against our desired miracles to be shattered to pieces in jesus mighty name but let our path be clear to the top by the hand of fire in jesus mighty name lord catapult us into greatness as you did for daniel in the land of the babylon in the land of Babylon, in the name of Jesus. Help, Lord, help us to identify with any weakness in us, any weakness in us that can hinder us from being manifested uh, of our miracles. In the name of Jesus, let the power change hands in every area in our life to the hands of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We receive the mandate to put the flight of our uh, every enemy of our breakthroughs in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you, oh God, that victory belongs to you and you have given us the victory through Christ Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for divine victory. We thank you, oh God, that the gates of hell cannot prevail against us in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen and it is so amen amen and amen and it is so yes you will pass in the name of jesus adonica i agree with you it is so in jesus name Amen. Amen. You are welcome, Trina. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Victoria. Amen. You all are so welcome. You, I, When I started this YouTube platform, I never imagined using it, uh, you know, as a tool for ministry. But this is what God created me to be. He created me to be, remember, a motivator. So I just thank you and I praise you for emotional healing, for restoration of our faith, restoration in every area in our life. I received that Janubia, 
68, I received that in the name of Jesus. Paula, we do it at the first of every month. I usually do it on the first, but um, we got a little behind this month. Watch the video from yesterday. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in the video yesterday. I'm so glad you found the word helpful. Brenda, thank you so much. Viva Glam B, Amen, Diamonds and Pearls. Oh, thank you so much, Charlie's Angels. You're welcome, Brenda. You're so welcome, Kim. Yes, yes, Victoria. I love you more. Thank you, P. King. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the word, Martha. Yes, yes, it's such it's such a pleasure. Yes, restoration is your portion. The prayers of the righteous avails much. Absolutely. You are so welcome, Trina. Yes, Sonia, you have to join us the first of every month at 7 p.m. This is the first month I've done it this late or missed it like this because, um, yeah, it's just been something else. Amen. So, Robin, you de declare and decree that he is blessed. Thank you so much, Margo. Dainty. Oh, Tara, thank you. She sold a seed. Oh, you guys know I never ask you guys to do that, but thank you so much. Don't make me cry. You know I'm a cry baby. Oh, thank you so much, Atricia. Oh, thank you so much, Stunning Crystal. I receive it. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Bernice. January's? I, I think I, I think it's uh, if it's over there, it's up. I don't know. I have to look about the Jan. We we did do the one in January though. <clears throat> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you guys, because so many people, you know, they don't know what God created them to do. And sometimes people will frustrate you and, you know, try to convince you that that's not what you should be doing. But that's how you know that's the very thing um, that God needs you to do when they try to frustrate you to keep you from doing it. Oh, thank you so much, Jay. Kim, we need more of this. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome, Kim. Now you know you're coming and going. You sit down and ask God, what end should you be expecting? I might need to copyright that. What end should I be expecting? What end should I be expecting? I think that'll preach. What y'all think? Oh, Trina, look, that bag still sitting over there looking a mess. I need an organizer. Because this is a it's a really big bag. That that particular Louis Vat bag is big, and I have systems in it. But I think I need to buy an organizer for that bag to keep it organized. Cause honey, I start out right and it just goes in the very wrong direction. Oh, you're so welcome, Miriam. Blessings to you, pre piano. Play, uh, player I agree I think it was right on time as well Miriam I, I'm believing God with you for your healing yes Connie that's the very thing you run towards the thing that they try to keep you from doing you go ahead and do that thing absolutely I bet if you came up here more, we come to hear you to get motivated and blessed by your word. What you what do you mean by that, diamonds and pearls? Yes, that's a good word. What end should I be expecting? That just came out of my spirit. Yes, we all struggle with, with um, purpose. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. We all go through that. Like I told you guys, I didn't know. I mean, it was, God reminded me of this. It was written way back in 2009. You're so welcome for the Honey Book Tutorials, Margo. Let me know when you join so I can add all of my contracts and things to your um, profile. I had no clue, but God did. Oh, thank you so much. Every time I hear you, it's at the right time. It, that just means it's the time of God. What a blessing. 
Oh, Trina. Tell your girls I love them. Janubia. Janubia. Gotcha. Hey, Hannah. Oh, that's so sweet. Diamond and petals. Diamonds, petals, and pearls. Yeah. What end should I be expecting? Oh, my gosh. Piano prayers are said twice a month. I don't know about twice a month, honey. I'll see them. File just not starting it. This Brenda, email me and I can email you the tutorial for a honey book. Oh, tell them I said hi, babies. Oh, I love you too, Gloria Salter. I hope that you enjoy tonight. We do this the first of every month at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And we do it for an hour. So we did pretty good tonight. We are, you know, 45 minutes in. You all are so welcome. You all are so, so, so welcome. Oh, Margo said once a week. We'll see. We'll see. I don't, we'll see. I'm not, I don't want to make any promises. Let me pray about it and see what the Lord has to say. That's true, Dulce Maria. I do it once a month, but I share snippets of what God is. Yes, I am wearing my Fenty lip gloss. I did not find a car, Hannah. Isn't that a shame? And, you know, quite honestly, I have been, I haven't had, I haven't had to buy a car for a long time. So I've been paying myself a car note for several years to buy pretty much whatever I wanted to buy. So for like five to seven years, maybe I've saved a car note. Um, and the money is there. It's just, I haven't been able to find exactly what I want. Well, I'll tell you what I want, but my husband won't. He, he, we can't agree on, on the car. So his family has, um, several e extra cars. So we've been driving the extra cars, which they are really nice. Like they're super nice cars. They're, they're not, um, typical extra cars that people have in their garage i'll just say that <laughs> i would take one of these two cars to drive it all the time but anyway um i haven't found a car yet oh yes incognito thank you atricia yeah so uh when i got my last job that i worked forever um, we got a company car and my boss was like, why are you paying? Cause at the time I was driving a Mercedes. She said, why are you paying a Mercedes payment when you never drive the car? Like, that's crazy. You could be saving that money. I never owned a personal car whenever, um, I had a company car and I was like, well, if my boss is telling me that, well, let me get rid of it. So I sold my Mercedes and it was like maybe the first year after the first year I got married, I sold my Mercedes and I ended up getting money back because I had an extended warranty on it as well. So I sold it. Um, so when I sold the Mercedes, I was able to save that money up front. And then I just started like the payments that I was paying my paying for the car. I started just putting it in a savings. Like I still let that money get taken auto drafted out of my account anyway. And so I knew like eventually when I started working for myself or when I quit that job, I would need a car. So I wanted to already have the money so it wouldn't be a financial stress on my husband or myself whenever I made that transition. So when I made the transition last September and, you know, I looked at all the money, I was like, oh, I don't want to spend that. My whole mindset had shifted because that was like seven years ago. So seven years ago, I was like, I want this. I want that. But now my whole mindset has shifted and I'm like, I don't really care about the name of the car i just needed to be functional i needed to be functional for my business um you know i need to be able to haul stuff i don't want it to be so nice i'm worried about scraping or scratching anything i want it to be safe and have great gas mileage so i fell in love because we i rented a lot of cars when i was traveling for work i had to rent a lot of um cars so whenever i was renting a car i um So whenever I was renting the cars, I was um, 
I fell in love with the Toyota Highlander. I love the way it drove. I love the size. I could fit my chairs. Y'all know my two big chairs in the back. I could fit those in the back of the car. I really, 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 you know, love that car. Well, when I showed it to my husband, he didn't like the way it looked. He was like, mm -mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's been the hold up. Like we can't agree on the type of car to get. So that's it. All right, so let me see what you guys are saying. Yes, he will lead me to the car. And 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 my husband knows it. My husband knows that, you know, when I hear from God, it will um He knows that when I hear from God, we'll make a decision and we'll move forward. I always say I wish I could pray. Let me see what you said. Hold on. I always say I wish I could pray how you pray when they ask at church you didn't want to lead to pray i keep thinking one day you will all you got to do is just start praying just start praying in my planner in my purposeful planner i have nothing but prayers so you can if you want to check that out it's on etsy it's only 14.99 and it's got all the prayers that you see in this book right here all my prayers are in that planner and you can start just by praying every day and just ask god to um to bless your prayer life and he will Thank you so much, Tawana. Tina said it was in God's time, and yes, it was for so many of every uh, for you all tonight. Absolutely, being mindful of the distractions, Stacy, blocking them as we go. Yes, He will. I agree, Dulce Maria. Bernie said, I've been with you since November 2018. I talked to my family and friends about how blessed I am with your declarations and confessions. I try to bless others with my notes from your session. That is such a blessing. For Ford Flex is a good car. Yeah, he ruled that out. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, he's ruling them out, honey. I feel in my heart God is going to give you a women ministry in your new house. I receive that in the name of Jesus. Yes, you use what for your events, Mitzi? The Toyota Highlander? Oh, yeah, it holds a lot, I'm telling you. When will I have time to do the book? I'm almost finished with the book. I'm almost finished. That prayer rain book is the bomb. Oh, everyone, please show some love for this powerful message. Hit the like button. Not stepping on Mars. Just think we owe me. Oh, thank you so much. Getting ready to sell my BMW. I went back to my country roots and got myself a pickup. I know that's right. Look at a Kia Seltos. I sure will. I'm driving my husband's 98 Ford F-150 for the business sweet luxury events. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I'll have to check that out. Because I am not, I ain't studying it. Mm -mm. Hyundai, Hyundai Pilot is also a great SUV. Okay, I use the Ford Flex for events. It's perfect for hauling event decor. Right, I ain't just trying to look cute. I'm trying to be functional around here. I didn't. I've already invested in the cuteness. I'm over that. I am over that. So I am over that. I know. All right. So you do you guys have any um any other questions or any other suggestions i know why miss melanie has to find her a car oh margo i would never make it with a trailer i will tell you that right now <laughs> trailers are tricky and oh i could just see myself turning one way and the trailer turning the other way and um that can be a mess That can be a, a hot, hideous uh, foolishness mess going on there. Y'all, 
my husband would be over here on here like y'all my wife tried to drive a trailer and she didn't she's hit 15 things <laughs> no i'm gonna stay in, i'm gonna stay in the suv lane because that trailer mm -mm. that trailer is not for me I'm going to tell y'all right now. I know that's not. Woo. Okay. The caravan and town and country is good for the business. They also have stowaway seats. Awesome. Um, Kimberly, can you do an update on the Sweet 16 vision book party and goal setting? Hmm, we'll see. I'm trying to finish this other book first. And then... I might have some other exciting things going on too. So we'll see. We shall see on that one. Because that's a lot of work. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I've been I've been just um doing the most. And I need to settle down. Oh, Connie said I could drive straight. Honey, drive straight. <laughs> no, it's a shirt. I probably, I don't know. You know, I heard that with a trailer, like when you stop, you know, stopping and stuff like that is totally different. So I've just been kind of afraid of it. I've been a little bit, just a tad bit afraid of um driving a trailer but we'll see i just don't mm -mm. she could just turn easy okay the pearl and black and white is a dress no it's a shirt the class is may 15th and 16th you are so welcome y'all are so welcome right the trailer detaching rolling down the highway just Listen, I think about, I know it's not good to think like that, but I'm telling you guys, unless you have worked with me and Tara has, she knows that stuff can just pop off at any given moment in time. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, you guys. So, that is all I have. If you don't have any other questions or um, anything like that, Victoria wants to know if I am looking for a building to open back up. We are probably 99% sure that we are going to be building a from the ground up using some land that has already been paid for. So it'll be different from, so it's going to be a little bit longer process, but I'll keep you guys up to date. You know, I don't really talk about all that stuff until it's over and done with. <laughs> you are so welcome julie yes we'll be building from the ground up so yeah oh yes thank you so much victoria and connie yeah so i just kind of keep it like for me you know i told you guys you can't tell everybody you can't voice everything god is doing in your life um just because people will speak against you and so you just i just keep it quiet and then when it's over with it's just over. It's done. Hold on. It's a done deal. It's a done, done, done deal. trying to see if I could quickly loc locate the um, floor plans or the building plans. Look at here, some more prayers. I was trying to see if I could quickly locate those to show them, show you, show you, but I don't know where. Look, my office is a hideous mess. I have been um, working on doing my taxes. 
and doing taxes is um is is something serious honey in this arena in the event planning arena so that's what i've been working on doing my taxes and i got stuff everywhere if i showed you guys my office y'all would talk bad about me but anyway that's it maybe it wasn't meant to show you guys but anyway you guys enjoy yourself yeah they are it is another job within itself kia i stand in agreement with you that um you will pass your real estate exam and that you will have the mind of perfect recall in the name of jesus and i believe that it is so and just remember that what god has for you it is for you and to show ask him to show you their um his expected end for you the cost of the online class right now is 199 you are so welcome i think i missed some of y'all's chats and things like that good night everyone who's getting who's saying good night uh, isn't that right connie mm -mm. all right i'll leave this up a little while for you guys to enjoy it for those of you guys who logged in late um, the online class is $199. The um, in-person class is $499. And I think that's it. And the online class is going to be changing within the next month. It's going to be broken up into several, several different modules. And you guys will even have like a textbook. I'm going to do a full textbook to go with that class. So you're going to love that. It's going to be the bomb. All right. Okay, you guys. So good night. God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you. I pray that each and every you, every one of you will have sweet sleep. Um, in the script, in his word, he says um, that he gives his beloved sweet sleep. So I pray that each and every one of you guys have sweet sleep. Have a blessed night. I love you all. God bless you all. I love you. Good night. Bye-bye.